Good morning. Annyeonghaseya. Thanks so much for inviting us to come present. Uh, we're going to be talking about Hive Tracker, a tiny, low-cost, and scalable device for submillimetric 3D positioning. Um, I'm Tanvi. These are my colleagues Dario and Cedric, and we're going to be joint presenting this project. Uh, just a disclaimer right off the bat, this is a very uh, early project. We just wanted to get the information out there and make it open source so that it wouldn't be patented. Um, so just put that in mind. Uh, just so that you have an idea of what the talk is going to be about, I'll give a brief introduction about why we decided to work on this project. Then Dario will talk about the materials and methods for our uh, proof of concept. Then uh, Cedric will talk about the improvements that we have made and also the future directions of this work. Okay, so um, the Hive Tracker is for uh, accurate positional uh, tracking. And why are we interested in, in this problem? Well, there's been um, historically a long-standing interest by many, many fields to document movement precisely. Uh, one of them being in the art world. Uh, dancers um, are very interested in being able to not only be uh, notate and document where individual limbs are, but also where people are moving through space and how that correlates with music, say. So this is an example of a dance notation by Victor Laban from the 60s. And it's super comprehensive, uh, but it's a bit cumbersome to use. The, the symbols are a bit difficult to learn and then also to to have all of your dancers learn. So these days, most of the time in the dance world, when you're trying to share and teach choreography, people just uh, make videos and then upload them to YouTube. Um, another area where people are interested in documenting movement is in athletics. However, most of the time, we only do precision documentation of people's movements after they've been injured. And it would be ideal if we could do this before injury such that we can prevent injury. Um, another uh, group of people who are interested in documenting movement are uh, maker spaces of the future, where people are trying to preserve traditional handcrafts and be able to teach them to uh, people in order to keep these traditions going. However, what these communities are finding is that just taking video of these activities tends to not be enough information. So we need some way of documenting the movement in a more precise, high-resolution manner. And then, last but not least, in the fields of neuroscience and medicine, there's a growing interest in having very detailed, high-resolution uh, tracking of uh, movement and behavior in order to understand the neural circuitry that goes on underneath. So this is just a, a short video showing an example of some live movement tracking using a program called Bonsai, which we're going to talk about a little bit more later. Uh, so what is available to us currently for the precise documentation of movement? Uh, one of our options is motion capture systems. And um, these uh, systems have been very useful for enter uh, the entertainment and the military industries. However, as you can see from this photo, the setup is uh, quite large. There are many components. It's very expensive and it's not very scalable. Thus, it's not terribly accessible to the communities that we just mentioned. Um, Another option is IMUs, or Inertial Measurement Units. And um, the drawback of this system is that it's not an absolute positioning, uh, positional tracking system. It's a relative positional tracking system. So there tends to be a lot of drift. And this makes it difficult to use when tracking continuous movements, such as human movements. Um, and then the last option available to us at the time of writing our paper was the Connect. Uh, and the major drawback of this system is that the Kinect was originally designed for gamers standing in front of a screen, and so there's only one direction of tracking. So if you're trying to track someone moving freely in a space, then you need to have multiple Kinects. And again, this becomes very expensive quite quickly, and um, it's not terribly scalable, and again, it's not very accessible to the communities mentioned earlier. So what are the, the major things that we need? We want uh, whatever device that we're coming up with to be small enough to track individual human joints and limbs, or to be able to track research animals such as rats. The other thing we want to be able to do is we want to be able to use as many trackers as possible at the same time. Uh, then we, uh, the last thing is we want this system to be affordable for artists, academics, and athletes, especially those who may not have a lot of resources and funding uh, available to them. So to talk about our first proof of concept is my uh, colleague Daria. 
Thank you, David. Uh, now we're going to explain where, what this technology that we use to create our device, and it's based on the conversion system that is called the system. Uh, this yeah. is a 3D really tracking system that uh, allows a user to be inside of the VR, uh, VR space, and it's all the time tracking that user to reproduce the VR space and the movement inside of this world that they VR. Uh, this system is composed of two base stations that are set in line, a uh, thermal the mistake which is put in the face of the user, and then two controllers that are in the hand of the user and are tracked for it. Uh, this system can be updated with two trackers that are, are trackers and are quite expensive and are going to be quite big, and they are to be attached to some accessories, but you can see at the picture, but they are big and not good. Uh, then we are going to show how it works in the normal way. Uh, the user is inside of a room, and this is the system is constantly, constantly tracked, and we, the user can move freely inside of the room, and ATC is all the time tracking this institution and reproducing the VR system to like, the, the same of the VR. And we are going to explain how it works more or less now. And we have two base stations that send light, the thermal state and the controller that are provided with uh, photo diodes. <coughs> and then the, the base stations are seen with the thermal display and with the microcontroller. And that's allowed to the system to know where are all the components of the system at the time. Uh, but for us, the relevant part of the system is the base station or lighthouses that work with light pulses and laser planes that allows to triangulate inside of the room where is the object that we are trying to look at. And that was like setting a flash signal that is going to set the zero time of the system. And then we, the, its base station throws a laser plane that could be horizontal or vertical. For example, if it's starting horizontal, we count the time from the flash until the first laser plane is detected. And then this time it could be translated to angles. Then we do the same with a perfect, perpendicular plane. And we have two angles, and we can determine one vector from the base station to the object. Then we do the same again with the other base station, and then we can achieve two vectors that are pointing uh, to an object in the in space. Uh, that allow us to know where we are in a room that's five meters cube. Uh, uh, then is, we have a representation that how it works. It's a, just a diagram, but we can see the both the uh, laser plane from one base station and where we is the object and we have the vector that is pointing to that object and the other base station in the, in the object corner of this room and that, that allow us to get the position in the room. Uh, then we translate this light signal to I don't know, one signal that we can understand. Uh, we can see that uh, one of the two flashes of each base station and the short pulse is the laser plane of each. And then we have this, this thing four times and we are able to, to determine the position every uh, 33 microseconds. Uh, in our first of concept, we start using the bulk ATK that is quite big, as you can see in the picture, and it's not really working to the small objects. Then we move to a microcontroller called Tensi, that is in the picture, and it's quite small, but the issue with that with microcontroller is that we only can track one photo diode at a time, because it, it only has one thread, it's not going to be really good uh, But for our of course, it was good, because we did some trials that we were to see, and we achieved good results. Uh, for all this tracking system, we use Bonsai, that is an open source uh, software that allows to interact between uh, different devices in the same computer without any programming knowledge. And then, after that, we, do, uh, we make two trials. The first one is what's in an ideal room, and we can see in the floor, in the, it's a green tape that we stick in the floor, making an external shape. And then we follow this path with a bike commercial controller, the, uh, the fast curve to provide and we follow this path, and we have the, more, the blue line that is over the, the, the state. And then we repeat this, this, this operation with the high tracker, with one photo diode, and we can see that the accuracy is quite high to be only one photo diode against 32. Then we repeat that uh, methodology with a non ideal room that is one meter by one meter by one meter. And we can see that the ATC controller in blue is 
travel in a little bit to achieve a good accuracy, and the high travel with only one can obtain the same shape, but with a little bit of drift. That will be improved in the next version that we are preparing with more prototypes. And then my colleague Seri is going to explain our current work and our future work that we are planning. Thanks. Um, so, this is a pretty complicated problem. Uh, maybe not all of you understood it. I personally did it two or three times to understand the, the complexity of the thing. So you got that each tracker is actually tracking its own position and it's not the opposite. It's not the camera looking at the device and it's each tracker that is doing its own tr position, a bit like a GPS system. Um, to improve the system that we have currently, which is only using one of the sensor, of the sensor um, we found a system to add a um, few. So if we want to have better accuracy, we uh, found that the best trade-off is for photo sensors. So the way it works, as I was explaining, is you have a flash, it scans the room, and then it hits you. And once, once you get hit, you, you just take the time and you measure uh, this area, convert it to an angle. But if you have several little sensors just beside, you need a really good accuracy to be able to um, discriminate uh, to be um, accurate uh, for, for this position. So, in our case, we say we need four photodiodes because if we have an object that rotates in every orientation possible, uh, this kind of detroit brick shape that we can see with the four red dots would be a kind of optimal um, trade-off. And the problem is, if we want to have a, a real accuracy, uh, my microcontroller could not do that because it would have to interrupt the program, take the, start, the time stamp, stop the interruption, take the next time stamp for the, the other uh, photodiode, but we already lost the, the signal because the laser kept scanning. So we don't know where we are exactly, and we lost a lot of accuracy. So the parallel processing seems to be the best uh, approach. And as an engineer, the first reflex is to use an FPGA, uh, a few programmable KRA, which allows real parallel processing in hardware. But uh, it takes some time to develop. It, it has a cost, and it takes some room on the, on the PC, even though you can see here some exist that are really tiny. Um, that's probably what we would have gone uh, to if we decided to but we found this pretty good technique called uh, PPI for Programmable Peripheral Interface. It basically allows you to connect in hardware inside of a microcontroller made by Nordic Semiconductor in NR52. You can connect for real, even with the processor off, a GPIO, General so the, the signal coming from the photodiode. You can connect it directly to a timer and timestamp it in parallel, even if you have some, uh, some code running and if you have several happening in the same time. So now that we solved this problem, we have this beautiful magic microcontroller that can do everything we need. Um, we will need to send the data wirelessly because we want something small and free. Uh, you can see at the bottom right the explanation of the, the processor. So it has the Bluetooth energy and everything you need in 8 by 8 millimeters. Uh, just above, you have an IMU, International Measurement Unit, and we will see, that embeds the fusion of the accelerometer, magnetometer, and gyroscope. And uh, we can still use the, those raw data to improve the, the positioning obtained with the, the photosensors, uh, which are connected on the back of the PCB. Uh, I have some board with me. If anyone is interested, I can show you after one. But it's pretty small, uh, it's the size of a uh, coin, as you can see here. So, uh, yeah, that's about the size of a uh, quarter, you can see, uh, yeah, about an inch high and 2.4 centimeters high. Um, and it's 1.4 centimeters uh, thick, 
zip, so you can put it on the back of the mat if you want, or in an object, anything inside of the candle, whatever you want to try. Um, so you can see the, the little uh, photo sensors boards on the surrounding of the motherboard in the middle. They're called chiclets. They're made by this company called Triad Semiconductors. Um, they're pretty expensive, uh, but they are accurate, and it's a good first version. Uh, they're connected using this flex, con flex cable that is also expensive and connect uh, So we will look for, um, the next step is to make it cheaper using our own through all photodiodes that would basically do the same as the chiclet that we just saw, but we can also, we also have to add to that the little circuit that we see on the left. The interesting part of this uh, through is that you can orient the, the, the sensor on your object uh, so that it has the best uh, position uh, depending on how you want to track. Um, I mean, the, the pins are bendable, so it's making it simple. So, on the software side of the future work, uh, we are trying to make this thing as simple as possible so it's Arduino compatible. Uh, we even have to modify the Arduino environment so that it works smoothly. It's simple for you. Uh, but we, uh, so that's the, the embedded firmware. Uh, on the software side, we want something that is as easy as possible to connect to. And a couple of days ago, we experimented with web Bluetooth that allows getting the data directly, directly in the browser. So you can use WebGL, WebVR, web, whatever you want, and just uh, get the data. I can do a little demo if anyone is interested, and if it's for another purpose. On the performance side, size, um, we, if we want to get the, a similar accuracy and refresh rate as what happens uh, with the OptiTrack systems, uh, there's this very common approach, which is to integrate the accelerometer data and fusion it with uh, the optical positioning data uh, using filters such as time um, So it could be a bit later, but we're still working on porting the proof of concept that I just showed uh, to the, this current uh, PCB that I just showed uh, in my book. So as a takeaway, uh, you can basically see the Hive Tracker as uh, an improvement of the Vive Tracker. So the name's quite um, So basically, we miniaturized it, uh, made it cheaper, now it's $75 with the chickens, but it can get down to $50 probably. Um, scalable, uh, mostly as opposed to the T track system that often tends to lag after 12, uh, 15 objects that you track on your computer. And the accuracy is still pretty good. Uh, as of the so track that can go to more than a millimeter accuracy. Um, and the most interesting part for me, I think, is that it's open source, so any of you can use it, uh, modify it, uh, help us to develop it if you're interested. Um, so, yeah, if you're interested, uh, feel free to contact us uh, using the Twitter or the uh, website that has an email in it. Uh, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much.
this. So the PCB tracks its own position. It can share it if you want, if it wants, but it doesn't have to. Yeah, but like, as I remember, maybe you know, like, uh, I used Google Tango before. You know, Google Tango, like, yes. Google Tango also has a lot of sensor inside. Yes. And for, can track, can motion. Yes. So compared to Google Tango, like, so it's a good, it's an interesting comparison. So the Google Tango has a real Linux embedded that consumes a lot of the GPU and so on. Yeah. This is a tiny microcontroller that consumes almost nothing. Uh, you saw the size of the, of the board. I'll show it again. Uh, it's really smaller than a, 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 a phone. So the Google Tango, for those who don't know, is a, basically a phone with a Kinect inside that basically reconstructs the 3D shape around it. And this one doesn't have to do that much processing. It only measure times, do some math to extract its position according to the, to the line, and transfer it, not so much. So you get a much better accuracy for the positioning, like uh, I was saying, a third of a millimeter. Uh, the Google Tango would not have that, but it has a lot of other features, which are really good. Also, uh, the applications that we're most interested in would involve, say, um, taking the hive tracker and sewing it into clothing so that when people are you know, moving, that then we are tracking them, or being able to put them onto uh, research animals. And so right now, the, the, um, the ethical requirements for a embedded device on a research animal, on a rat, uh, it needs to be um, less than 10% of its body weight. So for an average rat, that's about uh, 10 grams, eight to 10 grams. So we need it to be really, really small. Yeah. So yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> Not quite small enough yet for a mouse. Mouse needs to be four grams. Thank you so much. Uh, any other question? Thank you very much.